Damn. Holy crap, that's so pretty. Okay, Sky, stop getting so beautiful without me. I'm almost there. I like to start my days in national parks before sunrise. Spending days alone in the wild, I can better hear the voice of the land. Nothing quite, just like get your morning off to a good start, like desperately scrambling across some rocks to catch the sunrise. I did not know I was going to be waking up uh, so early this morning, but I did. And I was like, we ain't missing a sunrise up. So I ended up just kind of like finding somewhere and coming and I was not going to miss the optimal view. So thank you rocks for not um, smashing my body against the ocean. Good stuff. The people who were sitting and watching the sunrise from over there probably thought I was a crackhead because I just like looked around, decided it wasn't enough, and just like booked it across the rocks and I can't even see them anymore. What? National park sunrises and sunsets are like always like otherworldly beautiful. So even if it means I don't get very much sleep and I'm hiking like way too much, it's worth it. It's always so worth it. After learning the art of planning in Shenandoah, I truly utilized this mastery in Acadia. I never really knew what I would be doing any given day since the weather forecast changed by the hour. I ended up heading toward the coast through this lovely spruce forest as my sunrise start created the perfect moment to go tide pooling while the tide was low. This misty scene would make a familiar moody setting from western tide pooling, but the eastern coast would provide a totally different experience. Oh, that's slick. Nope, nope. The tidal life mainly consisted of crustaceans, who are very wary of birds, so you have to be real chill and slow when approaching the pools. This is an art form in itself, as the rocks are so slippery that it's kind of like climbing with your feet. It's best to find little ridges to grip with your shoes, and you have to take care with how quickly and heavily you shift your weight as you poke around the shore for a glimpse of these delicate aquatic ecosystems revealed only at these special times of day. Despite the differences from tide pooling in the west, I still had an amazing time discovering all of the colors and overlooked life, and it's just so fun to explore the shore and make your own adventure with observation. The murder scene, the evidence. I literally just almost fell standing still. <laughs> so heed my words. My hair is like straight up getting damp from all of the fog in the air. My desert rat ass is like, what? <laughs> this path is real bad with the mosquitoes. I'll like turn around to look at something really quick and see like a swarm has been following me. And I'm like, oh no, keep walking fast. But that's okay because he's so pretty. <laughs> My days thus far in Acadia had been quite impromptu and jam-packed, but honestly so enjoyable. It felt really good to visit such a busy park and successfully hit all of the hikes at just the right time by simply improvising, going with the flow, and following the cues. Living on Mount Desert Island time. See how cold it is. Wow, that is really nice actually. So despite this weather, I'm fairly certain I'll still be getting in today. So it's actually really shallow. I wonder how far I can walk out. It also meant I could accidentally get popular destinations entirely to myself. 
While it can be exhausting rising so early, hitting so many hikes, sneaking in work sessions, and doing long drives to find free places to sleep outside of the park, it always leaves me feeling so grateful to be alive. My early and prepared schedules often mean I see some truly spectacular sights during offbeat times of day, accentuated by surreal weather and lighting. This last minute morning swim made my day with grand views of the cliffs from the water. Despite a dreary forecast of rain, I managed to rise early, see a lot, and hit my whole day itinerary in perfect weather, all before 10am. Right when I started making breakfast, the rain arrived, proclaiming my improv perfection. I took that as my cue to skip the nearby climbing hike, scoring some awesome local goodies as I explored other parts of the island, made complete by discovering my favorite Acadia picnic area. I find the coolest picnic areas. It's a fish show. You know those gorgeous local eggs? I use them to make a fly breakfast on the go. Someone's lost the whole ass egg. Oh my lord. She beautiful. This got me on the trail sooner as I was beyond excited to spend a day in the forests and mountains of Acadia. Slug city bitch, slug slug city bitch. They're so tiny. Oh my god, a slug sleeping on a mushroom. That is just too cute. I'm five minutes into this trail and this is already the highlight. Look at that little face, just hanging out. I save my harder hikes for weekends, as they're almost always less crowded than the short and sweet ones. Not gonna lie, it was kind of hard to hike on this trail, not because of difficulty, but because this was a straight, lush, green, planty wonderland jam-packed with all of the mushrooms in life, so I found myself mainly wanting to just sit around and explore and feel on all the moss. But somehow, I began to make my way into higher elevations, exploring the varying communities of life they support. <laughs> I was greeted by the rugged plant life which could endure the alpine extremes. The top certainly required a bit of imagination. It was also very cold and windy, so I decided to head back down below the foggy pine tops. More foggy. Oh, you can actually see things. We got views, baby. Yeah. Please 
Those are the views I climbed up here for. But where I just came from is still very foggy. <laughs> Within just a few minutes, the sun drove back the blanket of fog and revealed these iconic Acadian views, proclaiming the perfect scene to enjoy a break and some journaling. This hike had me brimming with so much gratitude and excitement. I was incredibly proud of myself for making it all the way to Maine, challenging myself to grow constantly along the way. I had both flown solo and shared my space, learning when to go hard and move slow. The East had offered me a life experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. Mm, the sun feels so good. <laughs> Finishing my lunch, I said goodbye to all this crazy cool lichen and began my descent on a self-made loop which would hit a few more nearby mountain peaks. While I dipped lower in elevation, the visibility only increased. Catching some views on the way down. All right, all right. Yeah, baby. baby. All right, I went the wrong way. Just gotta follow those cairns. A lot better than in Utah, let me tell you. Hi, Karen. Not to be confused with Karen. I swear, y'all, the National Park Service just needs to like sponsor or hire me already because I be keeping people off the search and rescue list here. <laughs> I just constantly see confused people and I'm like, hey, you good? You good? And like, oh no, I got you. It's that way. Or, oh no, you can do that. No, you can go this way, you know? So uh, sponsor me, because you know me, I usually do way too much research before I enter a park. I usually have like three trail maps downloaded on my phone, as well as extensive knowledge of them all because I usually kind of make my own little loop trails. And overall, I usually just try to check out the whole area right when I get there so I don't miss out on anything and I get a good lay of the land. But on that note, I have been messing with the idea of maybe starting a service where I help people plan their itineraries in national parks. I do consider myself a little bit of a master when it comes to planning, making sure that the timing is right, that you don't miss out on anything, that you're avoiding crowds, and that all of the days are balanced in terms of physical exertion so that you can really spend your time and enjoy what the park has to offer. I could develop approaches for any kind of person. So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments below. Of course, on my Patreon, I do have my nature explorer tier where I give you my exact itinerary for each park that I visit so you can always get that there too and just you know have the awesome adventures that I'm having which are you know I think top tier so <laughs> of course all that play has to come with some work rest and preparation Mount Desert Island offers many a serene picnic area for all three and then some but let's keep these places beautiful and remember to always pack in and pack out, including your dog's bowel movements. And for those of us who pack so much into our days, these moments of stillness are paramount. Time to be present and care for your body and mind. Even if you spend a lot of time reading or creating, it's still important to stimulate your brain and creativity in fun ways. Also, never forget to stretch after all that hiking. Take it from this young 20-something granny who got knee problems two months into my nomadic journey. Stretching is so important to prevent hurting yourself, and these are some of my favorites for the common soreness which accompanies hiking with a pack. Again? Really? I also prepped some Spanish rice for the next few days and had my last supper of sorts before the last big adventure that finicky weather had delayed until my final day in Acadia. This would be the most mentally challenging yet, and definitely a good way to pregame spooky season. I woke up at 2am to ascend the highest peak in the park before sunrise. For once, I'm grateful for other hikers on the trail. <laughs> At first, I was a little scared and hoping some group would adopt me, and I did start with a lovely family from Canada who had some angelic kids, but eventually I felt comfortable enough to stray ahead solo. I'd hiked alone countless times, but never had I done anything quite like this. My vision centered on the canopy illuminated by my headlamp, seeing stars as I hiked, enjoying nature through senses seldom utilized, glimpsing foliage seemingly glow along the trail. Eventually, fear gave way to awe and liberation, and it wasn't as hard as I thought. Very spooky. 
Very, very spooky. Then there's the magical glow along the horizon, that something special about the sky before sunrise, the silence and solitude hovering over the land, and the cool morning air comforting your skin as you make your way to the top of Mount Desert Island. I know everything I've learned and gained will only continue to carry me forward. I know that here and now is where I'm meant to be, as a wanderer, dreamer, creator, and naturalist. This is the face of a crazy yeti who is very happy to be on a mountain before sunrise. I belong outside on mountaintops, beneath canopy, engulfed by cold ocean and mountain waters alike. Arriving early allows one to see all of the special shades in the minutes until sunrise, all equally enchanting as they slowly usher your surroundings out of darkness. Suddenly, I was no longer in the dark and could clearly see the plants which kept me company on my ascent. This is pretty dang cool. I do very much enjoy this rocky business. Cadillac Mountain is undergoing vegetation restoration and seeing how the park can help adapt as plant communities shift north. Wow, this is so cool. So neat. I love this. This is a good wind down. Calls the challenging route back down a wind down. It felt very gratifying to make my own loop with one last trail I wanted to squeeze in, making for a different descent that was equally otherworldly. <laughs> There she is, Samsara, I made it. I didn't end up eating my breakfast on the mountain and there's something that deeply pains me about eating a packed meal in the van. So I decided to check out one last swim spot in the park to replenish my body after the last two days of summit hopping, having hiked to over five peaks in a weekend. This was truly a perfect Sunday morning by my standards, doing something that challenges, inspires, and soothes me. Sandwich, yeah. Oh, it's dripping on me. Make sure I have any peanut butter in my teeth. <laughs> it's been really interesting because I have been waking up so early in Acadia. I've caught a lot of sunrises here. It's been really nice. For that reason, I've been finishing up most of like my big hikes and like my overall itinerary for the day before like 10 a.m. I have so much fun and I like do all the things early morning and then the rest of the day is kind of just open for me to explore, which has been really cool. Like I've found some cool picnic areas and farm stands. It helps me relax a little bit because I'm not trying to like race everybody to the trail and it's kind of nice just to like have it all to myself and nothing really beats like the quiet of early mornings in my opinion. <laughs> Instead of napping, as I had hoped, I spent the rest of my day doing some light cliff jumping with the coolest 10-year-old I have ever met between talking foraging with her awesome parents. God forbid I let my body rest or make friends my own age, but I wouldn't change a thing. Until next time. Some weird creatures.